Hey guys. So I think, um, um, yeah, just to kind of uh, start off with the introduction. So been um, have close to around 14 years of industry experience um, in the similar field. Started initially with software engineering, but for the last 10, 11 years, it's been in analytics. And um, uh, within that uh, last four years with e-commerce, um, one of India's uh, premier e-commerce company, um, before that, obviously, I was with different consulting companies in terms of as an analytics lead uh, and analytics uh, relationship managers, etc. Um, so majority experience that I have is in retail FMCG e-commerce. Um, a very uh, brief experience is in banking. But um, yeah, I mean, I think in analytics, the domain is very, very important. Um, but the other things that you guys will see today is also problem solving is also very important. Um, so over the next couple, one and a half hours, what we would like to understand is a very high level understanding of um, what is uh, uh, business analytics? What are the different things? And for the first time, probably we will, you might have seen some of you that people do different modeling, right? Um, for somebody who is very new to this field, you will probably get to know um, what is modeling actually, right? So that's something that you might get to know. Um, yeah, let's see uh, how it goes. But just to start off before this session um, happens, what do you guys uh, in your chat box understand? Um, you can reply. What do you guys understand by um, business analytics? What do you think business analytics is all about? What is your understanding level, uh, guys? Feel free to kind of put uh, your responses on the chat box. Okay. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, if you ask me, um, while there could be uh, without, there is a slide for that, but without getting into that, if I have to tell um, what the key word um, for business analytics, it will primarily be, yeah, someone has given an answer. A couple of people have started giving an answer method of using data analytics and statistical methods to improvise business process. Aster is saying mediator between market trend and business growth. Um, find the insights from the TICA and data driven decisions. I think, yeah, Nikesh, thanks for uh, putting this. I think in my case, um, what I would say is uh, data driven decision making is the key outcome for any business analytics team. Yeah. So uh, your goal should be how we can help the uh, business to make uh, decisions based on data. And for the same, there can be sometimes we may have to do modeling. Sometimes we may simply do just a basic average mean, median mode, frequency distributions. Um, sometimes it can be visualizations. Uh, sometimes it could be just a reporting itself, etc. So uh, there can be different, different ways to achieve this goal, right? So it could be something, it could, sometimes it could be reporting, sometimes it could be visualization, sometimes it could be um, a, a basic frequency distributions or an exploratory data analysis, sometimes it could be uh, a modeling. So all these are tools to get to the goal, which is to basically um, uh, provide insights that make the decision making process for the um, uh, leadership easier yeah so that's the goal uh, for business analytics and that's what you will see in the um, uh, next uh, slide that analytics is business analytics is nothing but use of data um, statistics quantitative methods mathematical models etc whatever we have talked about just now to managers and leaders gain insight and make better data-based decisions. That is what is the key thing. So key things to take away, somebody who is telling you that um, is uh, visualization business analytics, absolutely. Is math modeling business analytics, absolutely. Right? Is the simple uh, scatter plot business analytics, absolutely. So all of these are e components or all of these are tools but these are meaningless unless and until this is leading to some sort of an insights to the stakeholders or leaders. So unless and until that is being done, um, that process will uh, remain incomplete. Okay. Um, 
and what are some of the uh, okay now that we know uh, what is business analytics if i just jump the gun actually this slide will follow but tell me one thing it's whatever we have written on this slide right in order for becoming a professional in business analytics what do you think uh, you guys will require what kind of skill sets would you guys think that you require to get in order to be in business analytics field what is that what kind of skill sets just looking at these slides um, what do you think that you require Rohan is saying, sir, you are not audible. Others are, I'm audible, right? I think uh, everybody is able to hear, no? Uh, I'm clear, okay. So Rohan, maybe your, uh, uh, you know, mic or anything, you may rejoin essentially, okay. So what are the skill sets that business analytics professionals should be having? The skill sets that the business analytics skills Yeah, a lot of answer. Thank you. Um, so first thing people uh, that you see over here is data. Absolutely right. In order to get data from different, different data sources, we need to know SQL. And all the answers that you see, one of the thing that is common is SQL. Um, the second part that you also see in this uh, responses is statistical analysis. So you will need to know about the basic stats, right? And without the statistics, it cannot happen. So that data, uh, statistical analysis is in terms of basic stats. Um, the third part is um, uh, using the data and you to use the statistics to get basic exploratory data analysis done. Uh, we will need to know a programming language that can help us to explore the data. So SQL, Python, statistics. Python will help us to, let's say, I'm just giving an idea. Python will help us to play with the data. You get the data via SQL. Python will help us to play with the data and that is required. Statistics will help us to know about the basics of uh, handling the data. We need to look at, for an example, mean, median, mode, standard deviation. Uh, these are the basic thing. There are hypothesis testing, like questions like, will Modi win uh, election here or will Modi not win election? How can you statistically taking a sample answer these kind of questions, right? So these are uh, typically going to be questions that are going to be statistics. And then there is obviously mathematical model that will come into picture, which is typically the regressions, classifications, and clustering. And um, these days you will see computer vision, NLP, and the base of chat GPT, which is large language models you will see. So all those are based on mathematical models. So just to keep things easy, clear, um, first part, as you know, that is SQL. Second part is statistics. Third part is Python. Fourth part is any visualization tool. I know a lot of people have said Power BI. It could be Power BI. It could be Tableau. It could be other newer age tools as well, Plotly or things like that. Uh, so some sort of a visualization tool and good knack of um, understanding the mathematics. Um, a lot of people who are uh, not from mathematics background or a statistics background are not able to um, always catch the field um, because um, uh, you know they they are non-committal in terms of learning newer concepts. Um, I think the idea should be that if you are from a science background, you have a reasonable class 10, class 12 understanding of maths and that should help you to catch. Um, otherwise, things become a slightly difficult if you don't have class till 11, 12 maths uh, there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone has talked about Looker Studio. Looker is uh, Google's, um, you know, visualization platform. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, uh, and someone has talked about the AI tools uh, overall. Yeah, I think a very relevant question that, Mohammed you have talked about. Um, 
let me just isolate this part. If you see in this, I have written something called as an information technology. A lot of uh, what we analysts do, um, we need to be aware about what is the ETL pipeline, right? Or what is the uh, backend cloud infrastructure? Can we able to use BigQuery instead of, let's say, SQL, right? So these are being a good analyst. You have to be aware of the backend infra, um, uh, you know, in or what is available in the universe to be a better analyst. It is a very relevant skill, but it is not a mandatory skills to know, right? Mandatory skill will still be SQL, statistics, Python, visualization, and uh, mathematics. These are pretty much the mandatory skills will be. Okay. Now moving on, um, uh, you know, to to the next part of our discussions. Um, yeah, I will start this discussions. Yeah, sorry. So if you see, this is basically um, trying to uh, give us situations of or uh, what are the different kinds of um, you know data business analytics um, that we have on platform, and this is a continuation of the earlier. Uh, slide itself. What you are able to see over here is um, there are different sub components or components of business analytics. And the reason it is plotted like this is that this is what the analytics value chain is also established around. When I say analytics value chain, we look at business value from low to high, which means Anything on this higher side is going to be providing higher business value. So anybody who is doing reporting or wants to do reporting is on the lower part of the value chain. So reporting visualization is typically in the lower part of the analytics value chain, but it starts answering a very, very important question without which, which we cannot come over here. The relevant question is, what has already happened, okay? So it is reflection. It gives us an understanding of what has already happened. For an example, let's say we talk about sales, right? How the month had been, how many units we sold, what is the amount of revenue we made, uh, what is the average selling price, which region we performed better, how many customer transacted, uh, uh, did mail transacted, more or female? Did we have a metro higher metro uh, uh, transactor base or a higher non-metro transactor base? So what I'm trying to tell you, these are fact-based questions. These are something which this basically helps us to understand. Not only that, there can be a lot more. You can actually do some sort of a trend analysis, how the year so far had been. Is last month better than or worse than previous six months? So those all those things that you are seeing is basically a reporting. Now, um, if this is what is reporting, right? Then what is a diagnostic analytics overall? So often you would come uh, if you go to an analytics field or already in an analytics field, you will actually realize that every day some or our uh, some or the other business metric goes up and down. For an example, uh, last week we did um, X rupees sale. The previous to the, that last three weeks we did Y rupees sale. Uh, why is that difference happening, right? And it could be something which was getting sold today is not getting sold tomorrow. It could be something like we had a default rate of our loan. That is people who could not pay back our loan uh, was X percentage last month. But before that, it was much lesser, right? Now, these are basically what is this telling us that reporting is telling us this is what the truth. But leaders would not be happy with this kind of an answer, right? Leaders will come back and ask you why or where is the problem um, or why did it happen? Hana? Now, in order to why did it happen, you will probably have to now start narrowing down the problem and narrowing down the problem. So I'll take one example, right? Let's say, and this is what a structured thinking in business analytics is so, so important. 
So when I say narrowing down the problem, let's say we are talking about uh, uh, sales is going, sales has gone down this month. Uh, and people are, leaders are asking, why did sales go down? Um, the How do you narrow the problem? You will first say, okay, is the sales going down uh, happened in particular any geography? Okay. Um, is the sale happened in particular koi, any product portfolio? Is the sale happened in, uh, uh, is the sale, did the sale go down because we had any tech issue because of which platform was down or a supply chain issue because of which logistics could not happen? Is tech uh, uh, sale went down because we didn't have enough uh, products to sell? Uh, there could be, a, 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 did sell go down because this time a less number of customer came and visited us. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create hypothesis around why sell went down and then trying to validate why that actually happened. Now, this is what exactly called as a diagnostic analysis. And there is a, a common name in analytics uh, is this is called as a root cause analysis or an RCA, right? RCA is nothing but a diagnostics analysis. So it starts with what happened, then why did it happen? And then we often, um, once you give the reason, the leaders will try to know, okay, this is what had happened last year. Thank you for giving me the answer. Can you tell me, are we facing similar issue this month as well? So then you will need to give them some sort of a consumption layer where they can actually monitor on a daily basis that whether this is a recurring issue, this issue is continuing or not, or this issue has gone down. All the three things that you are seeing over here, these three things together is basically uh, uh, called as a descriptive analytics. So everything that we are seeing in the first three blocks, that is what is a descriptive analytics. Then comes uh, uh, the predictive analytics. This is basically prediction where people will ask you that what is the sales outlook looking like for next month or next to next month. That is what the predictive analytics going to be. And then once you have done a good, got a good idea of predictive analytics, then the final step is a recommendation overall. And what is the recommendation? Recommendation is going to be based on scenario analysis. Scenario analysis means today we are doing, looking today, I mean, sitting today, we project that next month sales will be 100 bucks. We want to be at a 120 bucks. Now, because there is a 20 rupees gap, um, if I put more money on marketing, will in price do I need to do so as to bridge this gap? Now, these are some of the ideas that stakeholders or leaders will give you. And you will probably have to uh, think about scenarios or talk to the different leaders to come up with scenarios and execute and then give a recommendation that give 100 bucks on put, let's say, X bucks on marketing that will take yourself from 100 to 110 and then reduce price by some margin. So that will take your sale from 110 to 120. So this entire flow that you are seeing is basically what the scope of business analytics. And it is a, it is very so fascinating that it is a day-to-day -day, uh, running of business, right? So that's how exactly the business analytics overview are. So these three are called as descriptive. This is predictive. And this is called as a prescriptive. The last block that you are seeing is a prescriptive or a, a recommendation. Now, um, as you can see, this is the most highest value, um, you know, highest business value. But at the other same time, this is the one of the complex component of the business analytics, right? Uh, when I say complex component of the business analytics, it basically means that it requires experience because this is when you are actually shaping the business decisions, correct? Um, so as an entry level uh, analyst, you would probably be doing this descriptive analytics. 
and intermediate analytics with a three years plus two plus two three years experience would do predictive start doing predictive and only when you have anywhere between five to seven years experience you will be able to uh, provide recommendations or participate in the prescriptive analytics before that nobody will typically listen or you will also not be able to add value so just to clear things this is a very powerful slide because it talks about how business evolves it talks about every business starts with metrics and kpis and then reporting those metrics on month on month why year on year week on week basis that is called as a reporting anytime metrics goes up and down then we do rca after we do rca people are also interested does the problem is a persisting or it is not so we need to give some sort of a dashboarding or a self serving consumption layer to the leaders then the leaders want to know i am taking recommended actions or i am taking some of the actions based on that how is the projection looking like or how is the future looking like that is what the predictions is going to be and then uh, obviously the last part is okay now that there is a there is gap between our the prediction and where we want to be as a business how do we bridge that gap that's how exactly it happens and typically people who join the analytics in the first couple of years would be majorly doing descriptive analysis followed by predictive and then the prescriptive part will come in okay couple of examples on how this process actually happens so this is something like a retail experience when you might have heard this is the seasonal uh, sale that happens right ki people would say the um, uh, season sale uh 30% of 50% of uh, uh twice a year typically happens in apparel or fashion industries hmm? now uh the question is um, basically from uh, the retail companies or, or retail stores is when to give uh, how much to reduce the price and when to reduce the price correct now um when to reduce the price and how much to reduce the price you can get some sort of firstly you would collect the descriptive analytics piece which is basically you look at historical data for similar products or similar stores and figure out what actually actually has happened based on that you, and then you have some sort of a sales target for the month using the historical pattern you predict what is the sales outlook is looking like and then finally based on the sales target and based on the historical data you tell the retailer that if you reduce your purchase uh, prices by 30% you will get the spike in sale so that you will meet the target so these are data driven and everything retail and banking guys are very much data driven so most of the decision making that happens in retail mark banking are going to be data driven yeah Uh, a similar thing that happens in typically a uh, hotel uh, industry you can understand that they would also do something like a forecasting of the demand they will also have some sort of segmentation of customers deciding what is the right room rent what kind of offers to be given similar you will see in airlines when you are trying to book uh, flights there is a dynamic pricing right how do they figure out they figure out the supply demand right so um whenever a particular day particular seat uh, a particular flight has a much higher supply you will see a much higher demand you will see that because they are able to consume that data they will suddenly spike the price right and that's how they gain basically the margin um, whatever that happens that margin that's how they get that so it's a very obvious that all um uh, airlines or hotel all retail all banking companies um use the uh, different kinds of analytics okay um now coming back um to let me see yeah yeah now coming to the next part um where we will talk about so this is might sound a little disconnected so till far whatever we have discussing we had been discussing is how business analytics had added value to business we will take up use cases as well but just to start the journey of business analytics the first step is to understand the different kinds of data or just looking at the data and figuring out 
what are the different kinds of data. Now in the data world, if you look at, um, there are any data set in any backend data, if you see, the data are two kinds of data. One is called as a continuous data and another is called as a categorical data. Now, what is a continuous data? You will see that your salary is a continuous data because every person's salary in a given range in a company is pretty much going to be completely um, uh, random, right? It can take any value uh, in a given range. Um, similarly, if you ask me credit card spend, it is also going to be a very much, uh, uh, you know, a continuous variable because anything can happen as a credit card spend. The selling price of a product is also going to be a, um, a completely continuous variable. So all of these are continuous variable. Defin definition of a continuous variable is in a given range, the, there is a possibility of taking any value. Think about and give an example um, in, in real life, uh, apart from the example I have given, what could be continuous variable example uh, from your experiences, guys? Anything uh, that you guys could think about uh, continuous variable example that you can think of? Um, while these are continuous variable, there is an, another set of variable in backend which are called as a categorical variable. And categorical variables are, as you can see, um, gender, male or female, from which region you come, north, south, east, west, you are a metro or a non-metro, do you, how many number of kids you have? Do you have one kid, zero kid, two kids, three kids? So now only problem in categorical variable is, uh, or only differentiating factor in categorical uh, uh, variable in uh, overall here is, that categorical variable cannot take uh, infinite number of values. Um, as you can see, uh, if you look at number of active loans or number of kids, you can take kids 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? But can you take kids 1.1 kid? Can you have a 1.1 kid? No. But can you have a salary of 3300.330 rupees? Yes, right? So you can think about that categorical variable only has predefined set of values that it can possibly take. Whereas continuous variable can take any values within a given range. Let's take few examples from your side, guys. Anything that you could relate to from your industries, which you guys can think of being used. Uh, let me see this, Ekbar, this thing. Yeah, so uh, Aster is saying categorical is used for classification and numerical is used for, sorry, I'll just put this overall. So categorical is used for classification, numerical is used for, um, you know, regression. Um, you are partially correct, Aster. Um, uh, the reason being all kinds of variables are used in both classification regression that you may want to say. However, um, uh, the dependent variable, like what you want to predict, right? That is what is a categorical in case of classification versus what is you want to predict in um, a regression is a continuous variable. So your pre prediction variable is going to be a categorical or a continuous. We will come to that, but I'm just saying that the answer is uh, partial. Yeah. So uh, just to give, uh, again, coming back, guys, can you write some examples of categorical and um, continuous variables from your industry? Anything that you guys can think about? What would be categorical variables? Just uh, some X, some set of categorical variables that you could recall, which is not in these examples or overall some continuous variables, whatever comes to your mind. Okay. So Pravesh has given some amount. So yeah. What else? Think any industry. Yeah, I think thanks. So continuous variable UPI payments by people. Yeah, okay. 
um uh, age be a continuous variable age is also a continuous variable as per correct um uh, slightly uh, yeah, it depends on but age is a continuous variable number of student passing a certain test uh depends i think it is uh, it is categorical it is categorical okay yeah i mean i think i would agree if it's it depends it's a, a categorical example can it be education level yes rahul is saying categorical very good example by the way rahul educational level means he type he is trying to say uh, class 12 graduate post graduate phd that is a very good categorical variable by the way yeah marital status is a categorical variable percentage of men and women in a company yeah it is not a categorical variable it is divyansh a continuous variable huh? percentage of men and women in a company will be a uh, completely you know cat a continuous variable because you think about it tcs may women percentage infosys women percentage um uh you know amazon women percentage i'm just giving example it can be anything no matlab it can be somebody 39.5 to 23.7 anything any random number hypothetically is possible when we are talking about um a percentage of women in a company so that should be a continuous variable for sure unlike a categorical variable okay Continuous variable is temperature. Categorical variable is vehicle type. Correct. Now, um, going back uh, to further differentiation between this. So, within categorical also, you will see that there are two kinds of variable. Uh, one is an ordinal and another is a nominal. And ordinal and nominal um, uh, difference is, um, uh, you know, um, ordinal means there is an order. Um, and what is an ordinal variable? Somebody mentioned about an educational level. So educational level is an ordinal variable. Ordinal variable in a way um, because you think about um, class 10, class 12, graduate, postgraduate, PhD. There is an order to it, correct? Right? So that's why this is called as an ordinal variable. Is gender a ordinal variable? Absolutely not. It is a nominal variable because within gender, a male and female does not have a priority or as an order as such. So this is called as a nominal variable. There is a further cut uh, on the apart from continuous and categorical, what we which is another kind of a categorical variable. It is also at times called as a discrete variable the discrete variable is number of active loans or number of kids number of credit cards now why i have put this into a categorical is they cannot take any values and they will take only set of very very limited variables this is also called as discrete variable so apart from continuous discrete categorical these are actually three I don't think discrete is a separate data type. It is part of a categorical data type itself because it also takes very limited number of very values. So number of credit cards, you can have one, two, three, four, or five, a limited set of values. Similarly, number of kids. Um, similarly, someone mentioned about a number of people passed in GMAT or I don't know, something like that. Um, in a class, it could be if number of people passed in GMAT is limited or always between 50 to 55 in a small range, it can still be a categorical. So the key characteristics is possible number of values is very, very limited. And you cannot have it within that range, you cannot have any values. You have a fixed set of values to take. Okay. Now that we have come to the um, uh, come to know about the data in business analytics, what we will do is in understand or see a data set and then develop a modeling. Yeah, this is probably the first uh, our first understanding of how a model is being built. What is the logic behind building a model, etc. We will try to understand and then um, maybe we can park it later as well. We will come back in terms of. Uh, doing that working example 
but the goal is to do one model because a lot of people who are coming into the business analytics field thinks that it requires a lot of mathematics to really, really understand what model is. So my idea is to break that. Um, just to be, you know, put things into um, clearly how uh, this is typically called, um, you guys might have some of you might have heard about a term called as, um, you know, some, I'll tell you one second. Can I write here? Huh? So there is a term called as a crisp, C R I S P uh, D M. Hmm? So this is basically called as a as a cross industry practice for data mining. Yeah, cross industry standard practice for data mining is what CRISP is all about. CRISP D M is all about. Now, what CRISP D M uh, talks about is basically it's a common methodology for any data science, uh, any analytics project to kind of analytics and data science projects to follow. So the process starts with um, understanding the business. So basically first you as a analyst need to understand what is the true problem uh, overall here. I may have to start this video actually, yeah. Um, yeah, so the process of CRISP DM starts with the business understanding or under asking the right question. Um, what are we going to understand? Because unless you have you know the big picture, you will not be able to start. From understanding the business context, you move towards getting the data and cleaning the data. And that part is over here. Sorry, uh, this is basically the getting and cleaning the data part. After you clean the data and get the get the data and clean the data. Then you do the typical exploratory data analysis through different visualizations. And when I say visualizations, it is typically, it could be, um, uh, you know, uh, visualizations around um, a, 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 the scatter plots or frequency distributions or bar plot or waterfall chart or anything of sorts. So this is the second part. So it starts business understanding, getting data, cleaning data, visualizing data, then followed by that basic descriptive statistics and modeling. After modeling, you would validate the model, whether that model actually in reality works or not. And after that, you provide recommendation. Just follow this cycle and you will get a very clear view of whatever we have discussed so far. And this is known as a crisp DM method for um, you know data mining. So which means you go to any domain this is the method of business analytics that will be followed cross industry met common practice of data mining crisp dm is what it is all about so business understanding they getting data cleaning data visualizing and exploring data understanding the data followed by developing model validating the model and recommendation and this goes on cycle yeah and um second part of um, uh, understanding the business analytics that there are certain horizontals or certain areas where business analytics is much more prominent or is basically used. One of the areas that I have extensively worked on is marketing and product. Uh, however, there are other areas like finance um, uh, and supply chain. These are the also areas where business analytics, the finance, supply chain, HR are also the different areas where business analytics is also used. So I majorly worked on marketing and product, but what I'm trying to say is there are other areas as well, like FPNA or financial analytics. You will also have supply chain analytics, or you will also have HR analytics. Those are other areas where business analytics also gets used. Now, this is a session before getting into the modeling part. I wanted to get response from you guys primarily. And what we will do is, this is more about common sense and knowing a little bit, um, just thinking a little bit from all of you, yeah? So what we want to do is, we want to write domain and we want to write or think about from our common sense that what are the different kind of business analytics use cases that you guys can think about. What is the objective? The objective is key is, if 
sitting today, you guys are able to think about the problems in different industries from your common sense, then you are already uh, one step ahead in terms of understanding that domain. Yeah. So let's start with basic, uh, the first area where you would see the highest kind of a, um, yeah, one second. I don't know how to remove this thing. How do I remove this? Yeah, okay. It's okay. Hmm. So first domain is, um, we are talking about banking and finance. Right. This is we are talking about first domain. What do you need to tell me uh, as kind of part participations and thinking with the participation is what are you guys thinking able to think about the different use cases where business analytics major use case major pain point where business analytics could be used. Yeah, someone is talking. You wanted to say something. Yeah. Okay. Then I would say, okay, let me just put, and you guys let me know FMCG e commerce. Yeah. And then we can say something like manufacturing and then we can put something like healthcare and along with that let's say something like human resource yeah very quick exercise we will not take a lot of time in this but just guys start thinking about um, what are the different kinds of use cases you can think about yeah Okay, anything outside this domain will also work. Don't worry if I have missed out on domain. These are major domains, so uh, we have put it. Um, yeah, operations, it's fine um, overall. Yeah, operations, uh, we can put up, obviously, operations is another one. Okay, tell me what are the use cases that you guys can think? I'm not talking about domain. Huh? Domain we can cover and we'll never be thinking. I want you to think about the use cases overall. Just one line problem statement uh, will work. Mm, GDP projection, not really a business analytics use case. Huh? Uh, think about that um, GDP projections is typically not banking or finance guys will do they will basically take data from the different world bank and rbi the dvp projections is a much much difficult exercise it requires a lot of sample data so think about when i say banking or finance we are talking about let's say what will an hdfc bank do uh, what is a bandhan bank do right um, so that's kind of uh, thing yeah i agree to one problem statement that aster is saying this is very uh, common uh, problem statement, but by the way, one is um, which customers to give approve loan and at what rate so as to minimize the default rate. Yeah, I think Arun Aster both are essentially saying the same thing. Somebody has said, Divyansh has said, I want to know credit card usage and uh, customer segmentation, something like this. So what is the reason? Um, the reason is very, very simple for uh, what Divyansh tried to say. So let's say we have a credit card in market, right? But the credit card, how to make this credit card more attractive. If you realize that most of your customer segment spends more in online, what will you do as a credit card company? You will go to different online vendors and will start discussing more of an online specific deals, correct? Um, again, you can further think, is it travel? Is it e-commerce? Um, is it hotel booking? Where is exactly you need to be doing, right? 
and if it makes sense you will basically um, uh, you know do a lot more uh, you come up with a lot newer offers or come up with newer credit cards you are seeing that there are these days different different co-branded credit card right zomato launches a credit card swiggy launches a credit card um, make my trip launches a credit card so every player is launching i amazon has a credit card flipkart has a credit card so everybody is launching a credit card because of the same reason so good catch um there are other uh, banking use cases absolutely i think yeah rfm analysis is um uh, uh, also a customer segmentation analysis by the way for rfm rfm basically means recency frequency and monetary value this is used across industries and it is not only a banking industry usage but it is used to identify customer who are more loyal and who are less loyal and uh, rfm recency means last when uh, last when so for, let's say from a credit card point of view um last when he swapped the credit card right and frequency could be in the last six months how many times he has used the credit card and monetary value is the total amount of money he has spent via credit card in last six months so these are three things and if you look at together um recency frequency and monetary value somebody who is very very just bought very highly frequent and has a very high ticket value is a very premium customer and then i will get start giving him try making lot of effort in terms of retaining those kind of a customers or gaining more similar kind of a customers right so that is a very common methodology of customer segmentation by the way this is the technical name of the same is also called as clustering right so clustering is something which is used to do that um then uh, e-commerce industry uh, somebody have talked about uh, e-commerce i'll come to e-commerce uh, overall in fmcg if you tell me the biggest thing is who are fmcg companies these are our unilever uh, png right colgate palmolive these are the kind of companies that we have you know now for these guys what is the yeah what is the most two important things that you will want to know the most two important things for unilever png colgate kind of a companies is demand forecasting obviously they will need to be better at doing that and optimization of marketing expenses right because what happens is these guys spend you will see most of the advertisements are soap detergent hygiene pamper all those things huh? so they spend a lot of money on marketing expenses they want to know where is the roi and where to spend and where to where when how much to spend right um in order to optimize the budget so if i want to say what are the most important uh, use cases for this kind of a things these are the two use cases apart from that there are advanced ai use case as well i'm not getting there but advanced ai use case could be something like let's say inventory management um you will see also um apart from inventory management you will also see that they come up with something like a social listening uh, and what is the social listening because these are so much global bank think about when negative sentiment around maggie came they their self suffered right so similarly so it's very very important that it to track or identify very quickly if something is going wrong so that they can correct that very very quickly so they'll do a lot of this sentiment analysis across social media uh, overall to understand what is the uh, uh, pulse of the audience yeah sorry uh, someone was speaking to me uh, is it from google team okay um exactly so now coming back to uh, e-commerce field um i think in e-commerce uh, people have yeah exactly 
I think FMCG, someone has also added the competitor strategy part of it. Yeah, obviously competitor strategy comes in. Just to tell you guys, FMCG mein na, data source uh, is a third, uh, typically a lot of data is panel data as well. Huh? So panel data is in terms of the sales data uh, is a panel data. These are the Nielsen and the Cantor. These guys calculate, get the panel data. In e-commerce, I would say there is a lot more, um, uh, you know, uh, e anything, any digital business, not only in e-commerce, any digital business, it is a very fierce competitor pricing and selection, right? And what do what is being done? A lot of crawling being done in order to scrape the website, the other party's website and app and figure out what is the price and then accordingly change the price so obviously pricing is a big thing apart from that i think the biggest thing someone has already mentioned about it the personalization of uh, personalization when people open the app right uh, or when people search products right how do we basically make the experience a lot more personalized just to give you an example if i um, give a if I search for, let's say, blue shirt, and if uh, an e-commerce website is able to identify that you have money, I will show you expensive blue shirts. But if it identifies that you are from a lower strata or you don't are you are not as affluent as the other persons on the platform, they will start showing a lower high, you know, priced product. So you are seeing in under your same app. Um, when you are searching, you have a, some different results. When I am searching, I will have some different results. And the same thing is going to happen in homepage also, right? When you come on land on homepage, it will happen. The same thing is also going to happen on getting the kind of coupons that you get. A lot of time coupons are very targeted because in the back end, we know that you are someone if I don't give you a discount in your next purchase, you will probably churn out of the platform. So there are a lot of um, uh, nuances around that. So what I'm essentially summarizing everything under is a personalization is a big thing. So personalization, competitor um, uh, pricing and accordingly changing the pricing, right? And accordingly react to it is one part. And then finally, I think obviously like anything, demand forecasting will be continue to be a, um, a problem area, obviously in e-commerce as well. Yeah, um, someone, Akash has uh, raised his hand. Uh, will come to it, Akash. I will just let me see if I can unmute. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, go ahead if you want to ask questions. I don't know. I'm, I don't may not be able to do. You can write the questions. I may not be able to unmute you. Okay. So uh, uh, this is just uh, some of the areas. Manufacturing may I'm not writing, but in manufacturing, there is a lot of defect identification that you can do. So think about you are in a steel plant or you are in a auto plant. If you are able to identify the defects, the quality of defects using computer vision, that whether the grilling has not been done properly or this particular part hasn't been done properly, there is a lot of benefit in terms of a savings, right? So a lot of uh, defect identification, process automation, right? These are the typical areas where exactly, you know, business analytics comes into picture in manufacturing apart from the typical demand forecasting kind of a framework. Healthcare, yeah, um, a disease, um, obviously what is the disease or based on symptoms, based on symptoms, um, your disease prediction, based on your genes and ethnicity, right? You, what kind of disease you are at high risk that you, that it able to predict. Not only that, it is able to auto analyze the x-rays and the uh, typical different different reports. Um, it is also able to uh, basically work as a uh, decision uh, support system for doc doctors, right? 
So they, they are not replacing the doctors, but what I'm trying to say is there is a decision support systems of doctors. This is only a very narrow part of it. Today, if you ask me where is exactly the biggest part of uh, healthcare is being done, you guys, everybody must have seen the medical uh, representatives. So these guys basically talk to doctors and find out and uh, ask them or push them that their brand of product should be pushed, right? Their brand of product should be given, recommended or prescribed. Now the medical representative has a large part of their salaries as a variable salary. So the typical um, uh, yeah, variable or incentive calculation for them is a mammoth outsourcing analytics work to all of these clients. If you know, a lot of this work is being dying, ZS Associates and can, uh, yeah, companies like that. They do a lot of these kind of RP, yeah, work across. And obviously in human resource, you will have the typical um, most attrition analytics. You will try to look at the culture matching, right? What kind of, uh, a, a, you know, you will try to do. You will find out some sort of an early warning system you will try out your uh, segmentation of employees. You will try out what is their my voice survey result is going to be. So all these are a different, different HR um, uh, aspects that is done. Now, why did we discuss that? The reason for discussing this is giving you an, a broader idea that across industries, there are some sort of nuances, right? If you look at every industry has something unique, but there is also something which is very, very common as well. Maybe, yeah, most of these industries will some sort of demand forecasting and things like that. So that is the idea to get a sense of where exactly your um, role would be. One thing I didn't mention in e-commerce, apart from this, there is something called as, and this is again, any product tracks, I will make it in red and highlight it more. Any um, digital businesses, anything which is on app, right today anything that you access on your mobile there is a component uh, it is basically a product feature right and then there is a product analytics team also works behind the scene for an example let's say when you go uh, and enjoy go and um, experience an app um, whether you will uh, see the buy now button or add to cart button on the left side or right side should you uh, 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 you, you know uh, would you, uh, let's say a new feature like um, pay with EMI, right? Or a new feature like, let's say uh, you uh, pay with UPI, or it could be uh, something like, um, uh, you know, once you get to the PPV search for a product, there is an sponsored ad coming in. So what I'm trying to say is that every stage, your app is also changing. The app experience is also changing. And every app has different, different app experiences. Now, what is actually beneficial for the company or for the user base? In order to find that a lot of work goes in behind in analyzing the data, measuring and doing some sort of experiments. So typically any app feature, new feature will not be launched to everybody. It will be launched to a very small population we observe their behavior and if the behavior is positive, then only we will slowly, slowly roll that out. So these are a work areas, which is a very prominent work area. So if you want to know in analytics, one of the highest paying work area is right now product analytics. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, the reason for that being happening is that in product analytics, the budget comes from the product teams and typically product teams have a lot more budget and because you will realize that product managers are typically hired from very, very good places. Uh, so the product team budgets are pretty much higher. So they will basically have a very good budget and the product analytics jobs are actually very good paying, well paying jobs. Okay. Okay. Now um, coming back next to summarize um, what we have discussed. So this was something that we did in order to understand in different industries how it happens. This is a recap of our older slide where we talked about for the different components of analytic scope, reporting, diagnostics, dashboard, and um, uh, you know recommendations, uh, dashboard, predictive analytics, and recommendations. What is exactly the different kinds of tools being used? So if you see recommend uh, reporting is SQL, 
um, diagonistic analysis will be SQL per by, along with that basic stats and Python or R will be good to have because we will need Python for data exploration, data summarization and descriptive statistics for basic understanding of the data. And then obviously uh, Python R will help you to do a lot of data exploration better. So this is how your tool is. Then dashboarding, any sort of uh, dashboarding tool that is there, Power BI, Tableau, Click View, um, a sense of some aesthetics or ease of navigation. You will have to be a little more um, in the, there is a skill that I have mentioned here, please note this. And this is a very upcoming skill huh? in any consulting company that you guys may want to also think about exploring your career. So something that is being talked about is a design thinking um, or, or storytelling. What is a design thinking? Design thinking is um, there is a particular way for, so if a particular app is not getting an adoption, it is basically you are not thinking from the consumer's point of view. And as a analytics person, as a, um, a you know product managers, we are a lot in terms of inward looking. Inward looking means we feel whatever we are doing is great work. Um, but is it actually, are we able to present it to stakeholders, our consumers, and are they able to consume it? A lot of time, uh, the answer is no, because we are not able to keep things very simple. And in order to keep things simple, we do a lot of um, design thinking workshops so that whenever you are creating a dashboard, it has a proper flow. It is easy to understand. Every time somebody accesses this dashboard, he doesn't have to find out a FAQ or reach out to multiple people. How can we build dashboard very, very intelligently is something that is being done as a design thinking part. So apart from the BI tools, uh, visualization is, by the way, also not so easy. In my career, if you ask me, I used to make not so good dashboards uh, overall. Um, so I actually, this helped me in later part of my career to uh, build that. And then you have the predictive analytics and the recommendations where we talk about the regression, classification, clustering, uh, forecasting techniques. This is where you will need to know about the um, advanced analytics modeling. And uh, finally, recommendations is something which will come into uh, via storytelling. And one thing you are finding it common is across the different kinds of skill sets, you have a component which is a must everywhere is a business understanding. So business understanding and SQL is a very preliminary skill sets or a native skill sets for business analytics. If you don't have domain, you will probably be not able to understand uh, business analytics very, very, or do justice to the field. Okay. Uh, now, um, <clears throat> yeah, um, this is basically um, a very quick uh, summary of one of the domain that I work in. And you may say that Utsav, it is very easy to say now, uh, obviously, but my idea is to also give you some sense of the work, domain that I work in. Um, any other domains that I have worked on, um, probably retail on, et cetera, I will be a lot more uh, subject matter expert. But this is what you are seeing on screen is basically how a e-commerce uh, guy would like to think about. This is nothing, but this is a funnel on e-commerce from a demand side perspective. And demand side means a consumer lands on the app, he looks at the product, adds to the cart, makes the payment then makes the order then the order is done and finally order is delivered after the delivery either the customer accepts the product or he returns it so that's a very simple linear flow now as much as it looks like a very straight view so from a home page to looking at products to add to cart to payment there is lot goes in each part of the funnel as an analytics lever. So for an example, whom um, in order to bring people on app, you will need to do marketing. Yeah, because unless you build awareness or unless you keep people telling that, hey, uh, we sell these things, come us, come to us for better offers and etc., you will not be coming. So all these Facebook, Instagram ads that you are doing 
uh, is only on to move, make sure that people land on your homepage. Once people lands on your homepage, what is what should be as a retailer or as an e-commerce player, Amazon or anybody's goal should be? The goal is that um, I first know what does this person wants to buy and then accordingly I will try to push him higher priced product yeah, or uh, more personalized product. Higher price is wrong but more personalized product. So if I already know that whether what is your gender, what is your affluence or income level, what kind of product, do you like branded products or do you like cheap products? I can start showing that in your search in, search results, merchandising or homepage and in your recommendation engine. So your this is called as a discovery in e-commerce. Discovery is search, merch and reco in order to show the relevant products to users. Once users go, uh, he puts himself on that trap, uh, he lands on the product page. Then on the product page, we will start saying that, hey, this is the lowest price in the year. This is the best discount you can get. This is all about the product of long, long paragraphs. This is what people who bought this product have said this about ratings and reviews. So what is my uh, uh, as a retailer or an e-commerce player, my objective is once you come and check out a particular product, I will start you building the trust. Uh, uh, first part is I will start to build trust with you that this is a great product. This is a great value. But at the same time, I will also try to ensure that you add this to cart. So my entire objective is can I create that intent that possibly you were not very, very highly inter um, interested in buying this product, but just looking at the call outs and overall experience, you end up adding to cart. So what is a we what as a what is an e-commerce player actually? They are actually a virtual salesman. Yeah. So just to say that it's a virtual salesman, it's a digital salesman at every stage we are trying to think how exactly I can make you move to the next part. Now, when you have added to cart, there are two objectives, two things that can happen. You uh, check out in the same session or you wait for uh, check before checking out next day or later. Right. And if it is later you are planning to check out, I will keep on giving you push notification. Hey you have a product added to your card and it is 10% cheaper now or it is getting out of stock. What is the objective? To create a FOMO. FOMO is nothing but fear of missing out. So I will keep you reminding um, as a retailer, I will retailer, I will keep you reminding that, hey, you have added to cart. If you don't buy it, you are going to just miss something very, very amazing. Yeah, and uh, if you again put yourself on that trap, um, then we will uh, tell you, okay, now that you have put in, I'm going to make sure that you don't, uh, uh, you know, a, again, face hurdle. So I will make the affordability part very easy for you. In India, we have UPI uh, cash on delivery, um, uh, but we also uh, do have something like an EMI option, buy with EMI, um, no cost EMI, uh, buy now, pay later. Uh, those are all the affordability constructs that we have. Affordability constructs is in making sure your payment, you should not face hurdle about payment. And um, as India's GDP, uh, as India grows, right, overall banking sector grows, overall credit sector goes, I think this is just going to blast. I mean, in my opinion, the next three, four years, you will just see that or entire credit industry or the financial industry will just boom like this because um, a people have aspirations, but people don't have money. Huh? Everybody wants to buy an iPhone or a, a Royal Enfield, but just that they don't have money. And what is exactly the culture is that you put people on debt trap in terms of ensuring what we as a, any players are trying to do. We are saying that um, uh, we will fill your aspiration. Don't think about the money. But obviously, there is a flip side on all those things are around. But you making sure that your payment part is done. And once your payment is done, you will uh, move to the order. Once you have moved to the order, as an e-commerce company, we will try to ensure that your consumer, your guilt of purchasing is not 
is is uh, reduced or muted so we will say hey the product that you have purchased is a five star rated product has been bought by 10000 people in last one week it is one of our highest rated product and you will surely you have actually saved amount of 1000 bucks on this product this is amazing great going all this is just to give you confidence ki you don't go and cancel you know? so you essentially stay and keep your order because thinking that you have got a great deal and then uh, obviously as a platform we have to deliver on promise in terms of uh, uh, maintaining the sls and overall and at each tail uh, at this stage what you are seeing over here is what is the kind of uh, analytics that are being done um, every stage whatever i have calling about these analytics are done supply chain is in the last stage once people have ordered making sure that the delivery happens this is about uh, uh, you know once you have ordered i will keep you engaged once you have uh, come to the add to cart i will communicate you what why you should add to cart and so on and so forth right so every stage my entire objective is to create intent keep you engaged give you traps or carrots and you end up eating the carrot and eventually if you do that then you are getting trapped into the loyalty loop and that's how essentially the overall shopping um, uh, journey eventually happens and that's why it's so important to know the domain uh, well here as well yeah um <clears throat> this is how um, uh, some of the sample problems um, that as an e-commerce uh, company kind of solves i will i'm not able to one second so these are some of the sample problems that an user e-commerce company i have three problems i will not take um, uh, all three of them for the interest of time because i have to also cover something else but this is just you can focus on uh, this problem this is basically a problem where uh, it is being talked about that the daily active user or a monthly active user is slowing down in any e-commerce platform or a consumer tech platform user is a visitor huh? he may not have purchased from me he now may not have purchased from me but he has come on the platform it's a very important metric for anybody because this tells about how many people you are right now is a prospect your total prospective universe is basically what is being talked about now suddenly let's say daily active user started to uh, slow down um, a daily active user growth then business leaders are asking you why is my dau slowing down as an analyst the first step is about building the hypothesis remember we were talking about diagnostic analysis this is the diagnostic analytics part we will talk about okay if user growth is slowing down is it slowing down in specific geographies is it there is in demographic um, is there a, a a change in any marketing execution that has happened is competition is eating out has there been a marketing spent in competition side did our prices go up uh, did our um, delivery time go up right so these are all of the hypotheses that we will first build and based on those hypotheses we will now look at the data and narrow down the problem that why or where exactly uh, uh, the dau growth is slowing down why the dau growth is slowing down is what we will try to understand and once we learn the problem then we will try to solve them through the uh, pres prescriptive and predictive analytics where we will say that hey um, can we let's say uh, there is a problem that has been identified that um, the marketing acquired user latest marketing uh, campaign whoever through that marketing campaign whoever users have come they are probably of poorer quality and that is leading to high uninstalls and people are leaving the app and that kind of reason why our dau growth is slowing down and if that is the problem one of the solution could be can i give the install team a set of uh, profiles or consumer profiles basically if that uh, remains sticky to the platform so that the install team doesn't go and try to install from any and every audience it only installs from let's say 18 to 24 uh, this kind of a cohort is what they are targeting towards i'm giving an example so these are some of the recommendations or prescriptions that can come 
Um, once uh, there are other uh, use cases for the sake of time, obviously I'm just skipping that, but you guys can refer to that uh, later um, when the video is uploaded as well. Hmm? Okay. Uh, now coming to hmm, um, one um, final things about um, a full-fledged uh, case study around um, measuring the marketing effectiveness uh, overall. So let's say there is a, this is a e-commerce brand. It is present across in multiple 50 plus markets. You can think about this is typically an Amazon kind of a brand. I will obviously not be able to tell the name, um, but this is a very highly visible brand who has multiple market presence, a very high revenue. Now, um, the typical issue that the client is facing is, um, he is spending a lot of money on uh, TV campaign. ATL is known as above the line or TV campaign and digital marketing globally. However, they have not had previous success in measuring ROI and contribution of online and offline channels using daily data. So they are not able to figure out, they are spending marketing money, sales is coming, but they're not able to know the attribution of how much money leads to how much spike in sales. And that is basically what the challenge first challenge. Second is there is a nonlinear effect of each of the different digital channels within digital. There are uh, per, different different channels. It could be SEO, SEM, or it could be social media, or it could be paid installs. These are different digital marketing channels. In each of the channels, how do I know this similar effect? Because the effect could be a nonlinear effect. And how can we finally operationalize this overall process? And um, what as a uh, solution, um, as a, a consulting company we gave is, we developed um, a, a analytical model in order to measure the contribution. And then we created a simulator to make sure that the client operationalizes. So just understand the process. We created analytical models, but we also created a simulator so that can action based on the analytical models, the actions can be taken. So that's an important part. And this is how the overall data flow, it starts with problem definition, data preparation, modeling, and analysis and recommendation. Very similar and uh, th whatever we have learned, again, a recap of the same things. We have already uh, talked about the data analytics applications across different domain. And then I will just finally talk about this part of these slides because this is an important slide, I guess, for all of you. So guys, see, this is a uh, this is basically more from a career point of view. Where is exactly the typical career of a data analyst will go? Now, as a data analyst, you have all these four career options uh, ready. One of the being uh, from a data analyst, you can move to a data scientist. From a data analyst, you can move to a business analyst. You can also move to a management consulting, and you can move to a financial analyst. Um, the path that is easier or more relevant to be taken or whatever we have discussed is primarily this path. Huh? So this is basically the path that we have. This is path, uh, sorry, not this path. This is the path. Everybody in my team, uh, whoever works in uh, my company, they have followed this path that from data analytics, analyst, business analyst, senior business analyst, then analytics manager or engagement manager, and then moving to head of analytics. This is the path that is the most commonly taken by analytics. Now, if you were early on your age, right, very, very early days, it is possible for you to upskill or get a good degree uh, uh, master's or uh, uh, any other, a little more relevant degree to get into the data science path and move to a senior data scientist and VP of data science and things like that. This is possible to move in this direction to move your career. This career, typically movement on the management consulting side, majority of the cases will require an MBA. So just understand, anybody who, uh, most likely everybody who are on the call with the right amount of effort can move in this career line. Somebody who wants to get to a data science, is a, it's a technical field. So a technical degree around MTech PhD or uh, some sort of a course on understanding the mathematics statistics deeper 
will be helpful or required in this career. However, on this side of the career, what is going to be required is a managerial capabilities and hence an MBA uh, will help you to be a better consultant, better salesman, pre-sales guys and a better uh, leader on this side because storytelling and management understanding, business understanding is required in this part. So this is a lot more over indexed by MBA folks. And then these guys, this particular part is a little more analytics with CFA, uh, CA experience. These guys are typically going to move to a uh, financial role. So uh, any, this is a little more niche role. You will need to have a finance education around CA, CFO, uh, CFA uh, overall in order to move in this direction. So if you ask me sitting today, where do I want you guys to move on? Probably my recommendation is to move on here. But obviously every people have a different, different aspiration. The movement is easiest in this. Uh, obviously you will take a lot more time to be a, become a data scientist or become a management consulting. Okay. So that is um, the data analyst uh, career path uh, overall here. Um, <clears throat> I will, uh, there is a modeling part which is remaining. I'll come to that. But before that, I want to take questions, guys. Um, any questions that you guys have, um, you know, so far, whatever we have discussed, um, any doubts, any questions that you can have? So Nikesh is asking as a senior uh, manager, senior analytics manager, you might interview many people as a, is senior data analyst or business analyst. Uh, yeah, so I'm more on the uh, senior analytics manager. So I do interview. I think um, if you ask me where should we focus more as an interviewee and how to prepare for the interview, are you looking for which kind of projects or portfolio? Very good question. Um, guys, I want to actually, um, or anybody in a good product organization would like to focus a lot on problem solving huh? um, and what is exactly a problem solving see sql obviously you have to know without sql no company will hire you python is a learnable language we have hired lot of people who doesn't know python yeah but sql everybody has to know so from top to bottom mostly everybody has to come to know sql so sql is a hygiene Coming to the biggest uh, differentiator of skill that I have seen most people are lagging and the selection and non-selection is problem solving. And what is really a problem solving? Problem solving is a structured thinking. Um, I'll give you a very simple uh, question and you tell me uh, if this question. So let's say, um, and you will realize that what I mean by a problem solving. Hmm? So let's say, it's a very trick question. Huh? It's There is no right or wrong questions. Uh, answers is this. So let's say there is an airport. Um, there are, um, uh, you know, three in that airport. Uh, for a particular airline's carrier, uh, let's take, for example, it is Indigo. Yeah, or anything, um, uh, Dubai Airlines or uh, whatever, uh, Air Asia, whatever airlines. There are three flights which were about to leave at the same similar time. Let's say 3.30 in the evening, every all the three flights had to leave. But um, what has happened that weather is very bad. And uh, because of weather being very bad, only one flight can actually take off. Uh, out, so there were three flights scheduled to depart. Only one flight can actually depart. Um, and in the waiting room, the passengers of the all three flights are they are waiting. Huh? Now, let's say you are the person who is going to, who will have to take a call that the flight that will take off, the only flight that will take off, who will board the flight? You have to decide. Let's say you have an analytics background and you, but you have not have an analytics background. You are just to going to do some sort of a problem solving. This is a business problem that one flight can take off, three flights passengers are on the waiting room. How do you choose 
the uh, uh, passengers who will board on this flight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, destination is anywhere, right? I mean, it could be, uh, you know, it could be a uh, here from here to Dubai or whatever, right? In Bangalore to Dubai, you can take that. Destination is not a problem. Now, can you just think about the question and think that you as a person, how will you approach who will board this flight hmm? when you have all so many people? And think that there are going to be, the moment you communicate that there is only one flight which will leave, everybody in um, uh, the waiting room will say, I want to go in that flight. I want to go in that flight. I want to, I have a major meeting and etc. So how would you essentially go with a clear plan and will resolve so that this chaos essentially does not happen? Now, um, while you guys think and put that number on the chat box or answer on the chat box, I think it is very if you look at this particular problem, why I gave this, this is I just made up. Huh? I mean, actually not made up. Um, I would be wrong. In one of the interviews, I asked this question, uh, similar kind of a question. But this is just to understand your on the go um, uh, 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 thinking process. How are you able to structurally think about it? If you are, uh, there is no right or wrong answer as you can think. But this is what I think Nike, someone who asked, what is exactly the skill set that I really look for, Nikesh? I do look for a skill set which can actually give a very structured answer like this um, of, of, for a question like this. Um, and it is not just like a random. Huh? You have to think about and you have to give a structured questions. You can say, hey, I will do a lottery. Yeah. Say, why lottery? he doesn't have an answer why not uh, uh, any other things so um, you know i think uh, yeah so uh, somebody has said firstly by age yeah that's that's could be one senior citizen and kids probably are the one which could be one of the priority audience yeah um the second part while a, a, a one one part which is missing that you also have to think about business or a revenue. Huh? Because of this bad experience, a lot of loyal customers should not churn. Huh? So people who are frequent flyer could be one category to um, you know very, very much prevent because for our airlines, frequent flyer is the gives you bulk of your revenue, right? Maybe people like you and me travel less often, but people who are uh, frequent flyers, they should be given privilege. So I preserve the revenue. I give importance to human side, which is you are talking about something like an age and uh, uh, you know babies or moms, uh, you, women, senior citizens, whatever that be. Third, third part could be um, if I want to think about people who have, um, let's say, somebody said urgency. I'm thinking it could be it could also mean that somebody who has connecting flights. Um, because I don't want the connecting flights to miss because then the compensations and etc. will basically increase. So maybe that's an, another important thing. Somebody who has a connecting flights is another one. Then, um, uh, okay, now these three uh, happens. I pre uh, These three components are done. There could be a fourth uh, thing that I can think about is, okay, um, the fourth will be a lot more on cost optimization. And when I say cost optimization, what does this mean? Um, I would try to understand that people, somebody, some people will have to be uh, remaining in airport, right? They have to be given uh, optimizations around, let's say um, you will have to give those coupons, um, a staying coupon or put coupons and etc. Hmm? Now, uh, how do I understand that what how to optimize the uh, spend, right? Can I look at my data and figure out that if I give these people a lower hotel or a three star hotel coupon, uh, they will be okay with, yeah. And one of the some of the things from the data you can think about is 
that have people bought add-ons already in their flights. Uh, people who bought already add-ons or people who have bought premier seats, uh, these are people, these are people mostly who would be the a little higher affluent. They would be very much fussy about what is kind of a facility. So can I think about also from that optimizations to people who are having already requested for or a little higher affluent side, can I put them on the flight first? Because the other guys, I can actually give a third graded hotel and can save money overall. So I'm just thinking more from a thinking, there is no right or wrong perspective, but to answer your question, where do people miss much? People think that it's a very complex field, lot to learn uh, uh, and get overwhelmed and eventually don't uh, take a, a jump in that. In my opinion, if you ask me all the interviews that I take, I try to look for or anybody in my organization who hire, it's not I, we give a very high weighted on general spontaneous problem solving because we believe that this is a skill which cannot be learned on the job. This is common sense. This is structured thinking. This is communication. These are difficult to learn. What we are ready to make him learn is uh, uh, modeling. We are ready to give him time to learn Python because we know that what kind of work is being done. We are not doing an hi-fi AI work. Uh, so this work uh, can be done. There is enough materials in the internet. People can download and people can get through it. Yeah, so that's that's the answer to your questions. Uh, Varunima asked one question. Will it be very challenging if someone comes from non-IT background to business analytics? have no prior coding knowledge. I did my tech in civil and did MBA, currently working in research analyst market uh, research. Yeah, um, um, well said. I think um, uh, firstly, no coding knowledge uh, doesn't mean that you can't, you will not be able to code. Uh, it is going to be uh, tough for you to be a, um, what should I say? Mm. It, it is going to be tough for you to be a hands-on data analyst, definitely. Yeah, if you want, if you ask me that, can I come as a, uh, I will say, come, can I come as a business analyst or a senior business analyst? My answer to you would be, it is going to be difficult, okay? But with the background that you are saying with market research and with, um, you know, MBA, I think this role can still, if you have the right amount, six, seven years of experience with the understanding of how analytics world works, you can be a good storyteller. Yeah. And this is typically a role, which is a storyteller role who um, understands the things, but doesn't want to do or doesn't know how to do things hands on um, because he is jumping from uh, let's say consulting to here, uh, you may not have to, your job may not have to be doing things hands-on, but you need to be good in mathematically and also from a business side. So coding is not the mandatory skill. Ability to critique our data, understand ki statistically ye wrong hai, ya sahi hai. Business wise, is it making sense or not? These are some of the skill sets. So answer to your question, it will be difficult for you to get into um, uh, immediately in, in analyst as a hands-on uh, performer. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back in terms of um, things that we wanted to quickly discuss. Okay. I'll take two minutes and then I will take the remaining questions as well. So I think um, in the very beginning of the class, we were actually talking about this, that um, we will try to look at or understand what is essentially a model is. A very basic um, intro. Um, so whenever we talk about a model, a model is largely an equation, okay? And what is an equation? There is something y, and it's a function of x1, x2, x3, yeah? What is, this y in modeling terms called the modeling terms y is called as a dependent variable what you want to predict yeah 
this is what it is called and what is x1 x2 x3 are called these are called as an independent variables and what are independent variables these are basically which will help you to predict the same yeah help you variables sorry variables that influence y okay this is what x1 x2 x3 is all about now in very simple term if you have to predict uh, something like salary you will have to know um, uh, something like somebody's experience somebody's qualification somebody's previous compensation right um, uh, you know whether he what is the um, a, a, you know apart from experience qualification previous compensation what is the skill set that he brings in so let's say these are all the different kinds of independent variables and when we are trying to predict salary now we have just written it as a model what is the different kinds of model this function that we have talked about this function right it can take different forms or shape the function can be taking a linear form and what is a linear form linear form is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 now this is whatever i have written as an equation this is basically a linear equation yeah right simple linear line now this is a linear form what is from here if i talk about here what is it's a very simple linear line or a linear equation or a linear plane this can take a linear form it can also take a polynomial form that is possible for an example it can be something like m1 x1 square or let's say cube plus m2 x1 square plus m3 x1 uh, plus m4 x2 cube and so on and so forth now what you are saying this is typically a polynomial form of order 3 this is also a possibility now what i am trying to tell you there can be multiple others possibility there can be a log form there can be an exponential form and so on and so forth and then there can be um, a very very complex form which cannot be explained or which cannot be written in equation okay but in essence i think you are trying to what i'm trying to communicate is if you think about any model that happens in analytics it is a simple relationship between y and x sometimes it is explained via a linear form sometimes it is explained via polynomial form sometimes by log or exponential and sometimes which it is so complex that you cannot write an equation for the same and this one example that you might have already heard is something like a neural network you cannot know an example like this now uh, uh, just to show um, uh, whatever we have talked about so a very simple let's say we have um, uh, somebody a marketing company this is a very first level example a marketing company has a bunch of tv spend and um, uh, for the different months that it has done and corresponding to that what is the kind of revenue that it has got both are in lakhs yeah now let's say if the marketing company wants to know how much money should i spend on a tv campaign to get a certain revenue you can uh, we will start creating a very simple assumption so just let's say we will say let's let's see how does the chart look like now this is how tv spend versus revenue chart is looking like now in this chart the relationship between tv spend and uh, uh, revenue can be multiple it can be you look at here it can be linear it can be exponential it can be polynomial it can be logarithmic it can be moving average power series everything hmm? so just to keep things simple again i can i will make things more complicated don't worry so just to keep things simple if i create a it is not really a linear but linear will give you a lot of error and i will correct that lower on but let's say if i'm just talking about linear and use equation look at this 
this is basically giving me some sort of an equation. And what is that equation? It is telling me that revenue is equals to 5.63 into TV spend, TV spend plus 945 lakhs. Yeah. If I use this, so any leaders who now want to come to me and tells me that Kutsav, can you tell me that uh, in a given uh, TV spend, how much revenue will we get? I can immediately with this equation, simple Excel, we have not done Python or anything. I can just substitute the TV spend amount over here and can find out, oh, if your TV spend is equals to 100, then your revenue is going to be equals to 563 plus 945 lakhs. Yeah, so this is basically going to be your uh, overall revenue. Now, when you do this kind of a thing, you immediately see that there are a lot of error, correct? We have taken an approximation that the relationship is linear. Now, what is the process of model building where the data science comes is that this is there is definitely an error. And what is that error percentage you can see? Right now, the error percentage is close to 95%. Yeah, you can see that R square. This is some sort of an accuracy measure. It is roughly there is a 95% error. Now, how can I improve this model? Let's see. Let's say instead of linear, can I use something like a polynomial? And let's say I use polynomial of, um, uh, let's say, polynomial of 10th order. Okay, I'm just giving some sort of an example here, random. Okay, uh, maybe not polynomial. Let's do something. I just want to show exponential. No, yeah, maybe polynomial is better. Polynomial is better. Okay, yeah, let's give this thing some degree. Now, <clears throat> if you look at this. If you look at this now, this is just some random curve. Huh? There is again some other equations. This is exactly some other equation with a longer equation. And if you see R square has improved and essentially the error has gone down to around 92%. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is this process of finding the equation is iterative. So there is a bunch of algorithms which are given there. Each of them have a something like linear exponential power, et cetera, all those different bunch of algorithms. In a given data set, we will iterate over all of these equations and see which equation basically gives the lowest error. And that will be the model. Here we just saw something simple, linear regression, how exactly we can do. That's what we saw. Uh, but this is essentially when it, it is a larger data, we will have to do it in Python and things like that. This is just to give you an idea about what is modeling. Modeling is nothing but, a, you know, understanding what is this function. Is this function linear? Is this function polynomial? Or what kind of function this is? But the key is uh, in about prediction or analytic, any predictive analytics is this particular equation. Okay. Yeah. So we um, end this discussion over here. Um, yeah, we will basically stop uh, this discussion. Obviously, it's 8.04, uh, so it's over. Any last question? Yeah, uh, absolutely, Nikesh, we will have to iterate and um, get the right model for prediction. Um, Gubi is also telling me, don't beyond, go beyond 8 p.m., so we will um, uh, pause it. Last question, parting question, anything? From interview perspective, how depth we need to know SQL, basic, intermediate, aggregation, city, window function. Yeah, I mean, I think interview perspective, SQL as deep you can go. Window function to mandatory. Uh, I think everybody has answered that. City, it might be okay to skip. Um, aggregation group by uh, definitely mandatory. Hai. I would say that there are multiple good uh, SQL playlist uh, in, 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 you know, uh, YouTube, a um, couple of them, there is somebody called as Sumit sir, then there is somebody called as uh, Alex the analyst, 
so these are some of the good youtube channel where you can refer to um, um, sql coverage uh, but sql yeah i mean window function is a standard question in the interview yeah okay cool guys thank you um, nice talking to we you hopefully you guys um, you know got uh, some uh, thing to learn um, uh, catch up uh, will catch you uh, whenever we meet next time thank you for your time